And you may think that if you're prepared to wait six months, particularly if you can bring that down by doing PCR on the culture, this is not a bad diagnostic. But let me caution you. If you take these organisms and you feed them to bovine macrophages, or you feed them to human macrophages, or you feed them to school biology class Acanthamoeba polyphagia, what you will find is these red staining organisms over the next few weeks will appear to disappear. And they shut down into a state of latency. You can detect them by PCR and by incitive hybridization, as Manuela Mura in my lab so nicely showed. But if you try and recover them in culture, you find it unable to do so. And this, of course, is relevant when you're examining uh, samples like milk, where most of the endogenous organisms has, have entered in infected macrophages, or in environmental samples, where since a teaspoonful of your compost heap will contain about a million acanthamoeba polyphagia, they have also trafficked through uh, unicellular organisms in the environment. Now, very quickly, there are two principal strains of this organism, the type 1 in sheep from Scotland, Spain, grey data from Timbal, is that the green, and what you see here, based on the micro in Australia, and the type 2 in bovine, or multinuclear giants, and the unique to it, that the sheep strains have been previously seen. Those portions of the genome green are equivalent to the white areas in what we call sequence strain. It is worthy of note that all the uh, types that have been isolated and identified from humans so far have all been identical or very closely related to the bovine types. Now this, the variability of this organism in the wild is indicated by this study from Germany in which they have portions of M. avian regions in them as well which are lacked by the bovine k tents from 14 farms, and there were 17 IS-900 RFLP types, and 50, 71 bovine map type 2 months, 15 miru types, very similar to the data we obtained, but have not yet published in Wales. So we see an organism which can cause a range of different diseases, which has a divergent genotype, but there are also big differences in phenotype. This is the bovine form, of course, uh, and here is this microscopic picture in, achieved in 24 weeks or less. And this is a human map strain isolated from a man living near Carmarthen uh, in Wales. And this has taken two and a half years to achieve this level. And at first, when you look at centrifugal pellets of the culture, you see nothing. And then you see slowly emerging these ZN negative forms, which, when typed genotypically, are proved to be man. And as the months go by, there is a very slow reversion of a proportion, but not all, of these organisms, such that they establish themselves after several months and years as cultures of organisms in a mixed phenotype. So although the genome of this is very similar to the genome of this, there are big differences in their behavior. And you should note that these things are by no means ferroplasts. You can put these, um, these form of the organism from sheep with coarse microbial yonis disease, or humans, into STS protease K, or 6 molar guanidinium thiocyanate, at 37 degrees for uh, overnight, and you will not rise them and release their DNA. Uh, not only are there large differences, but there are small differences in the behavior between isolates, and these are from Sally Nasser's lab that he kindly gave us in 1998. What we see here in two identical cultures is as a a smaller number of large colonies and a larger number of small colonies. And this behavior is repeated on subcultures. It's established, and this, of course, is related to the expression of genes responsible for producing the glue that determines the, uh, the size of these microcolonies. Now, it's long been known that animals infected with MAP secrete the organism in their milk. And funded by our Ministry of Agriculture, somewhat reluctantly later on, when they began to see some of the results, um, in 1991 and 94, we did a study which found that 7% of this number of carbons were positive by the DNA test, and 4.8% of this number of carbons needed culture pellets that went from negative to positive over time. These early studies have been um, ably borne out by the work of Irene Grant from the Queen's University in Belfast and others. 
whose uh, DNA detection rate was that, and whose culture rate was that. Again, from the Czech Republic by culture only, and in Argentina by culture, including uh, culturing it from uh, UHT. But perhaps the most comprehensive study was that from Jay Ellingson at the Marshfield Clinic in Wisconsin. And he took 702 uh, cartons of milk, about equally, between California, Wisconsin, and Minnesota. And he applied the PCR test using both IS-900 and the unique HPSX gene, and he cultured them by two methods and then did PCR on the culture. And his detection rate was 64% uh, by DNA test and 2.8% of cartons actually cultured uh, live bovine strains of man. Now, because culture, even in the absence of heat shock, is such a poor diagnostic, it's probable that the true number of these 702 cartons that actually contain residual, viable, resuscitatable man was somewhere between 2.8 and 64%. But even if it was 2.8%, a simple back of the envelope calculation would predict that upwards of 8 million people a day throughout the United States are drinking an organism which is a proven multi-host pathogen to cause chronic inflammation of the intestine of a range of histopathological types in many species. But exposure directly in the food chain is not the only way. These animals shed millions of organisms into pastures and they run off into rivers, just like E. coli 157 and Cryptosporidium. And where these rivers are used to extract, uh, uh, of course, there is a risk of domestic delivery. And where, of course, they run into an estuary which is wept up by southwesterly winds, in this case in South Wales, it, it creates uh, aerosol particles which have the potential ability to travel dozens or hundreds of miles. And just to summarize a lot of work, uh, both now and that which is current, the risks of human exposure to that from sources of environment mental contamination and cycling included, as we said, the abstraction of water infected with, with contaminated with man. Accumulation over time in domestic water systems in sediments and biofilms. Cycling in environmental disposal of water treatment wastes back onto farmland. River and estuarine aerosols. There's the potential for cycling of human map within human populations since we discovered the uh, human organisms in 17% of effluent from domestic su human sewage treatment plants um, over a one-year period. And uh, survival of that in the environment is open-ended in the sense that there is no demonstrable upper limit. So animals are extensively infected, and humans are widely exposed to man, a proven cause of chronic inflammation of the intestine. Now, Crohn's is chronic inflammation of the intestine in people. And it's widely known and accepted it falls in inherited susceptibilities, and I would add acquired susceptibilities, plus also the operation of one or more environmental factors. And these data from the UK illustrate what's widely known. Is it first came up on the radar at the end, essentially during at the end of uh, World, World War II and the since climb. It, this, in passant, it's worth noting that uh, this is consistent with the operation of inherited susceptibility and the exposure to essential environmental factors. It is not consistent with causation by genetics alone. Uh, the uh, disease was first seen in Western Europe and North America, uh, and it is now spreading, uh, particularly in the Czech Republic here. It's described in, in Egypt, in Iran, in India increasingly, in Korea, Japan, and in China. And it's interesting to note that the time interval between the two curves, the recognition and then emergence of Yonis disease and that infection, and the recognition and emergence of Crohn's disease, which is patterned in some areas and increasing rapidly in others, particularly in children. Uh, the interval between this is about 45 years. And in the case of Iceland, which accidentally imported MAP in 1933, the distance, the, the time distance between these two events was identical. The question has been, is the inflamed gut in Crohn's disease infected with MAP? And this has been a difficult question to answer for well-understood technological reasons. 